Welcome to Calming Heart, the sounds of David's Psalms. I'm glad you've joined us for this brief moment we share together. I will be playing some of the music that has been brought out of the Psalms. My name is Steve Reese. I play the harp. And over the last several years, I've been bringing the sounds of David's Psalms into recordings. You can find a lot of my music on my website, www.calmingharp.com. I have CDs available and MP3s. And you can go to YouTube. If you go to YouTube and then type in Peregrinati, P-E-R-E-G-R-I-N-N-A-T-T-I, you will find hours of beautiful harp music that you can just play in the background and be calmed with the music that David may have played for his sheep at one time or another. So as we share this half hour, join me and enjoy the sounds of David's harp. Well, here we are again, another episode of Hebrew Radio with Calming Harp. Today I wanted to go over an idea that a lot of people have never thought of putting together. And actually, I have to confess, neither had I until I read a, an article. And the idea is the sight of sound. Is it possible to see sound? And um, there's a really interesting, I'm going to introduce to you a fellow by the name of Rabbi Hanan Richman. I'm sorry, Hanan Morrison. And I wrote an, a little uh, blog on this some time ago. If you go to my calmingharp.com and in, into my blogs, you'll see a uh, article that's titled Seeing Sound. Anyway, I was in Jerusalem on one of our trips there and visiting with Moshe Kempinski, who operates the Shorashim shop in the old city. And uh, we were talking and he had introduced me to his blog and on one of his issues, he talked about what Rabbi Hannah Morrison had written. And that was uh, out of Exodus in the English versions, uh, Exodus 20, verse 18. And it says there that the people, all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet. In other words, they saw the sound and they saw it and they removed afar off. And as you study the Hebrew words there in the text, there's a definite connection going on between the seeing of the sound and what's happening there. And I'll just read you a little bit of uh, Rabbi, Rabbi Morrison's. Uh, he wrote in Gold from the Land of Israel, page 135, and um, very nicely done. Anyway, I want to read what he wrote. And all the people saw the sounds. The Midrash calls our attention to an amazing aspect of the revelation at Sinai. The Jewish people were able to see what is normally only heard. What does this mean? At their source, sound and, and sight are united. Only in our limited physical world are these phenomena disconnected and detached. 
It is similar to our perception of lightning and thunder, which become increasingly separated from one another as the observer is more distanced from the sound. If we are bound and limited to the present, if we can only perceive the universe through the viewpoint of the temporal and the material, then we will always be aware of the divide between sight and sound. The prophetic vision at Mount Sinai, however, granted the people a unique perspective as if they were standing near the source of creation. From that vantage point, they were able to witness the underlying unity of the universe. They were able to see sounds and hear sights. God's revelation at Sinai was registered by all their senses simultaneously as a single undivided perception. Psalm 94 comes out of my album Living Water. This is considered another one of the Psalms of Moses. It's titled The Lord Will Not Forsake His People. And it reads O Lord God, to whom vengeance belongs. O God, to whom vengeance belongs, show yourself. Lift up yourself, you judge of the earth. Render a reward to the proud. Adonai, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked triumph? How long shall they utter and speak hard things? and all the workers of iniquity boast themselves. They break in pieces your people, O Adonai. They afflict your heritage. They slay the widow and the stranger and murder the fatherless. Yet they say, the Lord shall not see, neither shall the God of Jacob regard it. Understand, you brutish among the people, and you fools, when will you be wise? He that planted the ear, shall he not hear? He that formed the eye, shall he not see? He that chastises the heathen, shall not he correct? He that teacheth man knowledge, shall he not know? Adonai knows the thoughts of men, that they are vanity. Blessed is the man whom you chasten, O Adonai, and teach him out of your Torah that you may give him rest from the days of adversity until the pit be digged for the wicked. For Adonai will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance. But judgment <clears throat> shall return unto righteousness, and all the upright in heart shall follow it. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Unless Adonai had been my help, my soul had almost dwelt in silence. When I said, My foot slips, your mercy, O Adonai, 
held me up. In the multitude of my thoughts, within me, your comforts delight my soul. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with you, which frame mischief by a law? They gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous and condemn the innocent blood. But Adonai is my defense, and my Elohim is the rock of my refuge. And he shall bring upon them their own iniquity, and shall cut them off in their own wickedness. Yes, Adonai our Elohim will cut them off. to share that psalm with you, Psalm 94. It's a promise for us that no matter how bad things are looking, our Heavenly Father knows all about it. I am known to say quite frequently, and I think I've said it here before, but he is not standing on the balcony looking over, biting his nails, wondering how this whole mess is going to turn out. He actually has a plan and he laughs at those who think they have another plan. Every morning as I read the news, I keep asking myself, how in the world can this go on? Everything is just so crazy right now. White is black and black is white. Like Isaiah says, truth has fallen in the streets and there is no justice anymore. Some people who are caught red-handed are given a little slap on the wrist and released out into the public to do more damage. And other people who are seriously trying to make a difference are put in prison just because the people in power disagree with their ideas. Things are topsy-turvy and as we look around and see what's going on, we wonder how much longer can it last? I just want to encourage you this morning. I think those words that we just read out of the Psalm 94 really apply to us today. They really give us the confidence and the hope that our Heavenly Father has not forgotten and that He has a plan. He is in control. And so with that knowledge, I think we can go to this next Psalm I want to do, and that's Psalm 95. And that's actually a praise Psalm. Let us sing songs of praise is it's titled. Because if we believe what I just said about all the stuff going on and yet he's still in charge, then that gives us great promise of praise. Uh, it gives us the great provocation to praise is maybe the way I should say that. We should be provoked into praise knowing that he is in charge and this is all going to turn out according to the way he has it planned. No matter what it looks like, no matter what people are doing, no matter what, you know, uh, we say some of these people, well, they, they say they're praying, but look what they're doing. Well, that's not for us to judge. He's going to take care of that. So Psalm 95 says, Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving 
and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, before Adonai, our Maker. For he is our Elohim, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me and saw my work. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said, It is a people that do err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. Unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter my rest. So let's listen to Psalm 95.
So that's Psalm 95, praise the Lord. We're called upon to praise the Lord. Hallelujah is a command to praise. Hallelujah, praise to Yahweh. As we consider these thoughts of the sound and the sight, I just wanted to think about for a few moments the idea that the tabernacle itself, as I've spent some time on in previous lessons, that it was a whole fruit salad, shall we say, of, of sound. There were the sound of the harps and the cymbals and the shofars. And there was the smell of the incense. And there was the color of the different threads of within the curtains and within the priestly garbs. And there was the different metals. There was the gold and the silver and the bronze. And, and it's interesting to note there's different fabrics. Um, well, actually, basically, linen was the what the priest wore. But we find within our technology today that each one of those elements has frequencies. Metals have frequencies. Fabrics have frequencies. Colors have frequencies. And the sounds definitely, as we've been going over, have frequencies. And it seems to me that our Heavenly Father, when he put the design of that tabernacle together for Moses to build in the wilderness there, he was bringing all of those elements together to, because each one participated in giving us a, a different look at who he was. Because remember, the tabernacle was built so that he could live among us. Let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. And an interesting thought with the whole idea of these different looks, these color looks and these fabric looks and these metal looks at our Heavenly Father. I'm always brought to the idea that the elders around the throne in the book of Revelation, it records there that they are saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And they're saying that 24 hours a day. And every time they say, holy is the Lord, Shirley brought out the idea a while back. Each one of those statements of holy is the Lord is a new revelation that they are seeing. They're seeing something else to say, to declare his holiness about. And so maybe it's the emerald color rainbow around the throne. They say holy. Maybe it's the sound of the harps and in, in the sight of the golden bowls and the smell of the incense. Each time they're saying holy, holy, holy. And so I just want to share all of these thoughts with you to think more carefully about what you are seeing, what you are saying, what you are hearing, because all of them participate in bringing us into this sights and sounds of our Heavenly Father. And so today, I hope I've been able to encourage you a little bit. I hope I've been able to share these Psalms with you in a way that as you listen, you can say, you know what? The things may look bad, but they're not because our Heavenly Father is still in control and everything is going to turn out just as he planned. So I hope you've enjoyed our time together. Stay tuned, as I say, a little pun. I have many more songs to share with you. I have more to share about how this all comes together. And I pray that you will share and help people, especially those you see stressed, especially in these times that we're going through. Bring people to this calming and this peace and this rest that this beautiful music of the Psalms of David brings to each of our lives. Thank you for listening. 
Hope to see you next week. Many, many blessings to you all today.